What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we have a very special announcement. Your girls will be at the Black Effect Network Podcast Festival. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be there April 27th. And make sure y'all get y'all tickets at blackeffect.com. Yes, Horrible Decisions will be there, Carefully Reckless, Deeply Well, and many more. It's going to be so fun. So if you've never seen Poor Minds Live, I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss this. So go to blackeffect.com and get your tickets. Period. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where drunk minds speak sober thoughts. So, today, we have a very special episode that is brought to you by BET Plus. And we got a guest today. We got a guest today. We have Diara from the brand new BET Plus show. Diara from Detroit! Yay. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited. Me too. Because, this, okay. No, go no, ahead. go ahead, go no, ahead. No, I'm just like, this is the first interview I've ever done where I'm going to be drunk. So I'm already like Poor panicked mom. a little bit. Pull it up, pull it up. Already. I like to stay in control. Well, I'm trying to... Let me tell you something about Poor Minds. This is a place where you have a good time. Okay. You can relax. Okay. We got you. We Ooh. are not a podcast where we're looking for a viral moment yeah, or to embarrass you. you. So even if you do say something crazy, we're going to add that shit out anyway. Right. I sit on this motherfucker and embarrass myself every week. Okay. That's okay. true. Hey, maybe hey, this interview hey, will hey. be like 20 minutes. See, she, you know, you know. But, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and just dive into it. So let me say this. First of all... I watched the first episode, and I'm not going to lie. I was just kind of like, okay, let me see what this is. Right. I didn't go in with any expectations because, like, I am... I'm more of a movie girl. Mm. So it really takes me... I have, like, I don't pay attention to What's things. What's your favorite movie? Um, My favorite movie of all time is probably uh, Law Abiding Citizen. It's up there with, like... I have a mix of movies, like... I don't even know that movie. With, ja me with Jamie Foxx and Gerard Butler... Come on I've now. I missed that it. one. Yeah. Law Abiding Citizen is amazing. Amazing okay. movie. Okay. Um, it's up there with like uh, Ray is one of my favorite movies. Okay. Life. Ray is a good movie. Things. Life is Ooh, a great life. movie. Life, life is a classic. Life, I can't do life. You can't? Could it's never. too sad. <gasps> it, Why? It is sad. If you really it's just get into the whole the, jail, the, the whole life sad, in, in prison thing, it, mm -hmm. it, it's hard for me. And they finally got out, and they was like, and it was a hundred, or literally old like, as hell. This isn't a happy ending. Very, very sad. Me. So when I wa when I was going into it, like I didn't have any expectations. I was like, okay, let me just see what they taught my one too. When I tell you, I got so invested. It was good. Oh my god, it was absolutely amazing. Like I cannot Thank wait you. to finish the season. Yes, I'm excited because you know what? I'll say this. I feel like a lot of times in Hollywood. You know, black cinema kind of gets caught in the, oh, we only do slavery movies and women getting pregnant and struggling right. and all these struggle stories. So it's fun to see, like, a black woman in real life, you know, a teacher, she's yeah. dating, going through a divorce, trying to figure life out. Yeah. It's, yeah. And, but it's like a murder mystery. It is. So it's like a little different twist. It's fun. Thank you. It's a fun role. It was. Thank it you. Was funny too. And you fit the role perfectly because I believe it. <laughs> Thank I'm like, I'll be, I'll be believing everything you say. Thank you. It, it, I don't know if it's the writing or the acting, she but the girl is good. It's, it's, it's helpful. It's, yeah, it's helpful because <laughs> I, I did write it, and okay. I was like writing for my favorite actor. Mm -hmm. Okay. You. Yourself. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank so you. talk about your background a little bit. You know, you're from Detroit. But I'm from talk Detroit. About... Um, I'm from Detroit. I was always into like, I was always just a theater nerd. Okay. Growing up, mm -hmm. Grew up in the city mm -hmm. and was always like that girl that was like, into theater, into plays, into singing. So um, I went to NYU, studied theater. Oh, so you for real, for real. For real, for real. And then afterwards I got out and it was just a really hard time, I think, for black actors when I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of poked around, did theater, did little like two lines on the game and one line here and 
a few lines there. Mm -hmm. And then I started writing. Mm -hmm. And that really opened a lot of doors for me and, and really empowered me to start writing stuff for myself. Okay. So mm -hmm. I did a digital series. I wrote for shows like um, The Last OG. I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> the last OG. You're doing uh, amazing. I can't tell. Blame it on Ty. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Ty. Blame it on Ty. Um, and and then I have had different opportunities to develop shows, and this is the one that went. And I think it's like it's the perfect like uh, bringing together of all the things that I think I've learned. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're right, it is a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but mm -hmm. all housed in this mystery. And I, and I love that because, like I said, it's it's such a a realistic role. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. like, I first got tied in, you know, we were talking about uh, Diara going through a divorce because her husband asked for an open marriage. And it's like, right. what? Niggas be having us fucked up. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, I like to see the realness. Like, like I said, we always don't... You're struggling and going through it, but relationship-wise. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not always like a hard down, we down bad, struggling. Like, yeah, we, right. we go through relationship drama too. Mm -hmm. Right. So talk about the process of writing this show and mm -hmm. getting it picked up and all yeah, that, that process. Plus. So it was actually probably the easiest process that I've had. Really? In terms, in development, mm -hmm. yes. I ran into Kenya Barris at where all black people meet in Hollywood at the NAACP Theater Awards or okay. the NAACP Awards. Uh -huh. And he was like, I read your pilot, a pilot I had written for FX that didn't go. So we connected then, and then I ran into him again, like at Sundance or something. And mm -hmm. he's like, we got to work on something. So it was like one of those things where I kept seeing him. And then finally he was like, I'm moving over to BET Studios. I'm bringing some writers with me um, to develop stuff for them. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, <laughs> of course. I had just had a baby not that long ago and was trying to, and was trying to figure out what my next move was going to be. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really kind of easy yes. Um, and then this pilot was the first thing that I developed and they, we were going to take it out to pitch it all over Netflix, mm -hmm. and all these places. Mm -hmm. And BET plus was like, if you do it here, we'll give you a script to series deal, Ooh. which means like, if we like the script, we'll make the show Oh mm -hmm. wow! instead of like going through the whole pilot process. Yeah. So okay. that was really attractive to me. And I said yes to that. And then we got the, they liked the script and we made the show. It was it was pretty quick. Was the process fast too? For for television development, which that's what I was gonna say. People call it development hell, where mm -hmm. you could be in developing a show for years and years and years. It actually was probably it's two years now from when I first went to BET Studios. That's, oh wow, that's like a short period of time. That that's is really inspiring too, yes. because we actually want to get into the TV space, and we you actually do. Yes, yes. And we have an idea for a sitcom that we've I been like it. wanting to start for like a few years. Now. I love it, yeah. and Thank you guys want to start in it. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah! I got I like shit this. to say. I'm gonna get these jokes you know, off. Okay, well we should talk afterwards. Maybe <laughs> oh, we gonna chat it up. <laughs> yeah. You my girl yeah. now. Yeah, I, need you I to like figure that. out though if I want to start in it or not, or yeah. if I just want to write it and be behind the scenes and produce it because I just feel like you know. I don't know if I want to play me. I think you should. I mean, obviously, I could be me, but you know, I feel like... Who are we going to get to play you? Exactly. Who's going to be a better you than you, though? That's true. That's true. I, I feel like when you get somebody else to play you, it's because, like, you have done everything. You want to sit back and, and watch. watch it. Yeah, like, you You still... You feel like I should and, play myself. Yes. Yeah. And my motto is, is, like, get as many checks as you can. Yeah. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, if you're going to be that involved and you're going to be... Get, get another check. Just yeah. go ahead and yeah. get the you're going to be, be on set every day yeah. watching, mm -hmm. making sure everything's perfect. You may as well be getting another check. <laughs> That's true. You're making a good point. Points were made. Points was made. So I really want to ask you, too. Like, you have some legendary people yeah. starring on your show. Yeah. Morris Chestnut, Felicia yeah. Rashad. Like, yeah. how is it working with people that are so, you know, legendary in the acting world? Morris is hard to work with. Really? Because <laughs> See, that's what I wanted to he's add. He's really unattractive. So sometimes, <laughs> no, no seriously, sometimes I'm looking at him like, wow, what happened? Like, <laughs> like I, and I ask, can y'all pay me more for this? I'm looking at him. <laughs> the day I had to kiss him, I was like, ew, Ooh, how I can I do this? See, I would have showed up work on time. <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned like how Hollywood normally has black people doing struggle stories. That day I was like, I may as well be in a slavery movie. This is, <laughs> this is very hard. No, 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 no. Morris, <laughs> no, who are you playing? Sorry. Clearly. Everybody knows I'm playing. Morris is very is a dream to work with. Very oh easy. God. Very easy on the eyes and just easy on me, period. Yeah. Like, he's just a sweet guy. So 
it was one of those moments that felt really surreal. Like, oh shit, he was on my wall. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. When I was a kid, and now he's sitting right here, being cool as hell mm-hmm. on top of all of it. Because I definitely expected this business is hard, you yeah. know? And so when you hear stories about people being complete weirdos or being all these different things, sometimes I understand it. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you've been through a lot, whatever, whatever it takes, you know? But he's just one of those ones that's really well adjusted. Very cool. And the same for Miss Felicia Rashad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same thing. I was like, um, queen, like, right. welcome. Yeah. Can I get you something? You know, and right. she was like, Tiara. Like, she was so cool. Oh, and, my goodness. And I I start, sometimes I feel like um, the shorter the resume, the bigger the diva. Mm. It feels like Ooh. the people who have been in this point. business and have put in work, they, and are great at what they do and put the craft and stuff yep. first. They're all, they've been, in my experience, mm-hmm. very gracious, yes, um, wonderful to work with, and then just kind of like booing me and mm-hmm. like showing me mm-hmm. so much love. So working with the legends, and were you intimidated though? Like, because I know sometimes when people come on show, I'll be like, oh my god, I'm finna like, yeah, and it's like nerve wracking. So how did yeah. you feel like on the first day working with him and her? To be honest, I'm less intimidated when we're working. Mm-hmm. Like if we're just chatting. Sometimes I can clamp up, yeah, you know, yeah. not really with either of them, though, just because people are so cool. Yeah. But that's mm-hmm. my thing is, like, sometimes it takes me a while as a human mm-hmm. to open up. I can be, like, really, like, defensive and closed up. Uh-huh. Just, I don't know. That's Maybe that's the Detroit. Um, <laughs> but when I'm working with somebody, I'm like, we're all coming to work, and I'm prepared, and you're prepared, and let's go. So it wasn't that int- Not I wasn't, like, cripplingly mm-hmm. intimidated. Yeah. But that first day... I think Morris came in on the second day of shooting. Mm-hmm. And I was definitely like, is he gonna be like, yeah. is he going to be weird? Is he going to be difficult? Like, you know, and even if he was, I would have been like, you earned that black man. You've been in this business right. for so long. Mm-hmm. But he just came right in. We rehearsed that first scene. Oh, you haven't seen this episode yet. Yeah, because I've yeah, only, only seen the first, the first episode. Episode two, we get into an argument in the hallway at the school. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And we dropped right in. We came into the rehearsal and she, okay, the director was like, Damn. Like y'all, y'all had that chemistry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was like, y'all seem married. And yeah. He was, and from then on, we were just off the race. See so, me. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, like, so what was the process of getting them, like, of, I guess, them being casted on the show? Because I, yeah. I assume they probably didn't have to audition. Or, <laughs> Can you imagine? Right. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> like, what the, <laughs> so what was the process of that? Were you like, oh, I think these two people would be good in these roles? Yeah. Or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so the the show starts off, my character is going to start becoming an amateur detective, mm-hmm. right? Which is kind of a crazy thing to do. Mm-hmm. So we knew we we really wanted to start her off in a place that was like, really, she was really grieving her marriage, really bereft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it really needed to seem like the sun stopped shining in the sky. Like the end of her marriage needed to feel like the lights went out on earth. Mm-hmm. And so we know we needed somebody who felt like a movie star. Mm-hmm. And Robbie Reed, who is our, you know, a gifted, legendary casting director herself, was like really up to the challenge. Mm-hmm. And she gave us she gave us a list and we were like, uh, Morris Chestnut, please, God. Yeah. And um I wasn't expecting for him to actually do it. Mm-hmm. And she came back and said, Morris wants to do a Zoom. He really liked the script. So it was, we sat down, um, this is so him. He just wanted to make sure that, because his character does have a very big secret Mm -hmm. that I wish we could talk about on this show. Right. (laughs) Because damn, well, I'll have to come back. You got to come back. Yeah, you definitely got to come back because we don't finish it. Yeah, Yeah. if I'm not here, y'all have to talk about it. Yes, we definitely are. But he's holding back a secret on the show and he really wanted to know what it was because he he hadn't read the whole show. So he wanted to know what it was. He Mm -hmm. wanted to make sure it wasn't anything that was like violent or crazy like you yeah. know he wanted to know so we talked about that and then he was like I'm in good uh, yeah I love that and like I said the scene that I saw um was when y'all were at dinner kind of laughing like you were mm-hmm. reminiscing yeah. about the good times I was like oh shit there's chemistry there mm-hmm. yeah. And that's what I want to talk about, too, because, you know, you hear a lot of stories about people and obviously, you know, he's married. So I'm not talking about him. Yeah, we're both happily married. Yeah. Oh, you're married? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that's right. Yeah, so, yeah. OK, so th- that makes it even better for me to ask this question, because, you know, you hear a lot of stories about people falling in love on set or sleeping with their co-stars because you spend a lot of time with them. Y'all are kissing. Y'all are having sex scenes and this and that. Yeah. So how do you navigate that space being married and, you know, in this world? 
Well, my husband is one of the producers on the show. Oh, so oh, he, he right was up. there. I mean, he was never behind Blocking. the monitor. Ha. I was like, <laughs> he was never behind the monitor when you're hysterical. <laughs> Go home. My husband Take was at the, the monitor, boy, cock Nick. blocking. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna hate this so much. Um, no, you know what? It really, I know people keep saying that. Like, besides the fact that my 16-year-old self was definitely like, damn, DR, that's cool. You just yeah. get some more shit. Yeah. But I'm, I, it's true. Like, I'm so happily married. I'm sure. And, and also, you know, getting to know him behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. He is so boring, like, in terms of, like, <laughs> he'll tell you himself, yeah. though. He doesn't go out. He doesn't drink. He doesn't, he, you know, his wife, I was like, what's his beauty secret? She was like, he sleeps a lot. Like, he just be oh sleeping. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so he just watches football sleep. and sleeps. And that's, that's I think, the key to why he's so cool, yeah. to be honest, mm -hmm. and so normal. Because he's not out in the streets in Hollywood getting involved in a bunch of stuff. Right. But, I, you know, just knowing that about him, I, I, it, was, it was easy to, like, keep it professional. Yeah, you know, okay. keep that there. You know, I, I like to go home and, like, cause trouble yeah <laughs> so i didn't think i don't think we're like a compatible pair right, right. you know on screen it was on screen mm, that yeah. it works I'll, I'll be like i just watched the um the mia culpa movie with mm -hmm. kelly Rowland mm -hmm. and trevante yeah. and they had a really intense intense sex scene on there well that was, that was that was that was very ooh, that was very ve intense i would have said you know what they would have had to call hr on me that day <laughs> <laughs> hey they would have had to call hr on well, my here's the thing they have intimacy coordinators, which actually is kind of a blow. I have to be honest. You, you have an intimacy coordinator. And to be fair, it's important because people have abused these kinds of situations, yes. as you just said. You yes, would. I would. And I would. so, you know, they, they want to protect all the actors. Oh, you involved. can't protect them niggas from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, the, but that's what the enemies, intimacy coordinator would do. Okay. So they would come in. They would say, they asked the director, how do you want to shoot this scene? Right. Mm -hmm. And then they would go to your co-star and say, how do you feel about that? You know, right, um, right. Lex wants to grab all up on your ass. What, do you, what is your do. take on that? <laughs> <laughs> and if he says to the intimacy coordinator, I don't want her grabbing my ass, then you can't do it. I'm be like okay. this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. But that makes sense, though. All jokes aside, because I know how things, especially, yeah. can get a little weird, you know, oh, for, sure. for people, you know, on set. So being that, to me, I thought this was a big deal. This is one of the first things I noticed. Like, I know that you're writing in this, you know, producing in it and starring in it. Was it hard to convince them to use your real name? Because that's a big thing to me. Because I know a lot of times people get typecast. Yeah. Like, think about Carlton. We Like, a lot of people don't know his real name. We just know him as Carlton. Carlton. Uh, uh, Alfonso. Yes. Roberto. Yes. Is it Roberto? I think so. Roberto. Roberto. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was but, close. I was Roberto, like, it was close. Like, it's okay. Alfonso. Cause we, I mean, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Most people would have said Banks, <laughs> not Alfonso Banks. I'm Alf saying though. Alf yeah, right. But yes. it's a to me that's a very big deal because a yeah. lot of times, you know, this is the world being introduced to you. Yeah. So the, they get to know your real name. Yeah. So talk about that process of using your real name. In that the part is scary. Yeah. And I keep mm -hmm. being like, am I gonna regret this? Um. Well, one good thing is, like we were talking about earlier. Maybe people will learn to pronounce my name, right? Which is good because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've been, you know, Daria, Diarrhea, Diarrhea, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that people will know Diara, right? Um, yeah, it could be. Like I said, I might live to regret it, but I also feel like I'm not too worried about being typecast as I write, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I can always write something different, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll see how it goes because I know Issa was like I fully regret that shit so she did so we'll say see. that yeah, she, she did, did. Say that, yeah. I don't I, see I'm a big Issa fan I never knew that she regretted using her real name because I thought it was I, I think it's good to introduce the world as because it seems like I don't know you personally but that makes me feel like oh this is maybe her in real life and I feel right. like I know you you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying like it feels real right I think that's why people do it. Because that's what happened. Like, I had written so many pilots and not used my real name. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe I just need to use my real name as the character because it seems like it works. Right. All the way from I Love Lucy in 1950, whatever. Yes. You know, down the line. So I was like, let me just try it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really um, know if it was going to stick. Mm -hmm. The title, DR from Detroit, was kind of a working title. And then mm -hmm. we never came up with anything better. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was wondering, too. I was like, damn, like, you know, because Detroit, they have an accent to me. Yeah, we have an accent. Yeah. yeah and that's why I was like, 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 
kind of similar to California people. What? That's so weird. So I Dominique, always say that. Yeah. Dominique, who's in the show, who's also from Houston, mm-hmm. she literally said that to me today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. You think, don't think I so? don't hear that. I feel like we sound country. I feel uh-uh. like we have a really? country. Yeah, I feel like because everybody from Detroit's grandmother. What up, though? What up, though? <laughs> everybody's grandmother is from the South. Yeah. But I feel like we, we are just, you know, Southern people up North, to be honest. And then, yeah. And then, like, when I went to school in New York and I would be in a bodega ordering something, people would always be like, where are you from, Alabama? Really? really? Yeah. See, that's but why see, I, was... I don't feel like you have, like, a thick. Detroit accent either well, it's not big but it's there because that's what I was wondering when I was watching the show I was like either I was like she's either from Detroit or she she fucking studied the fuck out this <laughs> yeah. world because I was like I hear it but it's, it's very faint but I definitely hear it mm-hmm. I have I have an accent it was definitely a lot stronger I went through theater school where they okay. just, which was my one criticism of theater school they try to beat your regional accent out of you yeah they want you to be able to play whatever role but I definitely had a stronger accent mm. before I went to NYU well, That's if you ever need my, oh. a big mama country friend, I got to on the right. because I can't I, get rid of this motherfucker. That's what I was going to say. That's always one of my main <laughs> concerns with, like, wanting to get into accent. I feel like my accent is just so country. Like, I have that Texas twang that yeah. I just cannot get rid of. I think it's beautiful. I, I Like, I really believe that that's the wrong way to go about. Like, really? the way they would come so hard from my regional accent when I went to school, I think it's wrong. Mm-hmm. I think that's what makes you special. Mm-hmm. And I think, yes, there are some a small number of roles where you have to have no accent as right. a black woman, but not that many. Mm-hmm. Right. I think for the, for the most part, it's better to keep your special sauce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we actually have, because to my ear, I feel like Detroiters sound like they're from the South. So mm-hmm. we actually cast a lot of people from the South. I thought that was a closer accent than a lot of times we would get New York or New Jersey people. Mm-hmm. And I, we like John who plays danger, the guy who robs the house. Yes. He's from Atlanta. Okay. Um, and Dom is from Houston. Yeah, he's He's like the Detroit guy. And Bashir too, who plays Moni's husband, is mm-hmm. also in BMF. So we have some crossover. Okay. I feel like Detroit right now though is like a little. They're doing their thing as far yeah. as like filmmaking and stuff. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff being made there. So you live in Atlanta now, right? Detroit got no, no, no. You still, You say what? Detroit got two. Two be on lock. Man, what? Yes. You. I, all I the Detroit seen. movies are on Tubi. What's our, what's oh, our wait, Tubi movie? Wait, wait, wait. We did see Plug Love. Plug, Plug Love. That's a, that my, is an Oscar award winning yeah, film. Yeah. Plug Love yeah. is my shit. I, I love that movie. I, we actually had a scene in the show that was inspired by Plug Love. Really? really? Because, but we didn't have time to shoot it. But you know where he's like fucking that girl and he's shooting at the same time? Yeah. yeah. Romance. I thought, I thought that was such a complicated choice <laughs> it is. that i was like we have to use that we have to steal sorry um and so we, we were gonna have a, a, a chase scene where they ran through the house and somebody was fucking and pulled a gun but we we didn't oh my we god we couldn't afford it okay um so we didn't we didn't do it i when i tell you i feel like i love the fact that i feel like black people were kind of like locked out of hollywood for so long sure. and the fact that we are taking control and doing so much on our own. Mm-hmm. Like, you see people now that who are content creators. Like, DC just came out with his own movie. Like, you he see did, people yeah. now just producing and doing their own thing. So, yeah. how important was that to you to be like, you know what? This is my first project introducing to the world. And it has my name on it. And I'm doing everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was everything for me. I feel like I'm one of those people that just have a, a, a lot of trouble waiting for shit to happen. Yeah. I have a lot of trouble That's with drill. that. That's it's just hey, like I'm gonna go get it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, like, you. I'm like, oh, I think I should start a movie. Well, nobody's nobody's saying you should. Well, I guess I gotta go write something. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just my thing. I'm not gonna wait to be chosen, and I'm not gonna wait for the cosign of Hollywood. Mm. I just feel like, hey, I have some ideas here. Here they are. So that's that's my thing, and I think a lot of people are like that. If mm. we sit around waiting for, especially white approval, right. or Hollywood to recognize your talent you or be beauty or whatever, time. you'll be waiting. You know, you'll be in that casket. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. for me, and that was that was a thing too. You know, my mother passed in 2019. There was nothing like that feeling of like, oh right, we're mortal. Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. we're not gonna be here forever. If mm-hmm. you have something that you want to do you need to do it yes now that, so, create your legacy. yeah so it just created a real sense of urgency in me to to tell the stories that i felt like i wanted to tell mm-hmm. so, so who is somebody like that gave you that co-sign and you like 
yeah, I'm the, I, I'm kind of cold with it. Like, um, yeah, it's it's so important um, that people do that because it could it could change your whole life. It could change your whole day. Mm -hmm. I think one was Viola Davis. Ooh, when I met, I love Viola oh, Davis. I, yeah, I, love I her. am obsessed. Yeah, I, she's Lord probably her biggest fan. I, really, I am a Viola yeah. that like literally. I have watched everything. I don't uh, how to get away with murder. I know yeah. a word for word, bar for bar. And she's amazing. <laughs> like, she's she's an amazing. amazing and her story. Yeah. And her yeah. story. Oh my and her, god. Her spirit and her intelligence. Yes. She's just. She's got. She's got it all. And I had done a play with her husband many years ago. Uh -huh. And then when I did my digital series that I made myself. I sent it to everybody that I knew, okay. including her and her husband. And they mm -hmm. called me back right away. And they were like, we want to produce this. And so they took me, you know, we went back to ABC Digital at the time mm -hmm. um, to get, um, to do the second season, to redo the first season, the second season. And so just like her co-sign was everything. Um, she made a little video kind of explaining what it was and how she felt about me. And, you know, I wish I had it. I don't even know. They took it down off ABC Digital. Somebody has it. Send it to me. Because it really was one of those moments where I was like, oh, I'm You don't need <laughs> like, after that co you don't yeah. need nobody else to tell me I'm good for real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, and then the another simple thing I was writing on Last OG, the first season, mm -hmm. and Jordan Peele, you know, created that show and he was in the room. And one day after the room, he sent me an email that was just basically like, You're the shit, you're doing a great job. And I was just like, Oh, I'm funny. Yes. Like, yeah, I'm good. So, well, you're hilarious. You uh, first and that's all. what I'm saying. I when I tell you, I, I was went in so hard. With, this, I went in with zero. As, I just I just didn't know. You know, yeah. like I watched. Her, I was like, okay, this seems cool. Let me yeah. just tune in because like I Drea knows. I sit at home and I watch shows and t movies all day. Like I yeah. I just end up. I love it. I love the culture of cinema and yeah. TV shows. And I'm so, the opposite. Like I don't really watch a lot of TV. Like mm -hmm. I don't really watch a lot of series. And so stuff. what do you do for entertainment? Girl, I read a lot. Oh, I love that. Mm. I love what's your, what, is, what are you reading? What am I reading yeah. right now? I just finished reading this book called The Art of Not Being Liked or The Courage to Not Be Disliked. Oh, yeah. The Courage to Be Disliked. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. It's a good book. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. She got a lot of courage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm, just playing. I'm a little tipsy, though. <laughs> I, couldn't get that. I couldn't get the title together. But yes, The Courage to Be Disliked. I just finished reading that book like maybe like a week ago. That's a big one, especially oh, yeah. for women. Because mm -hmm. I feel like they teach us Pretty much from the time you're born, like, you have to be liked. That's yes. an important quality. Like, dudes don't have to be liked. No, they don't. Mm -hmm. They, they have, have to be, be respected. Powerful. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Powerful, respected. Come on now. Yeah. Nobody says that the women, they're like, and so even the way our voices pitch up sometimes, like, oh, I'm excited. Going back to what I was saying, I really like because I can see where it's going because at the end of the episode, like I said, they show her paying attention to detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they show her putting this together about the little kids and why they were fighting. So I'm like, she about to put this shit together about why this man is missing. Mm -hmm. And she that is. lets you know, like, she pays attention to detail. Even with her job, how she pays attention to the students. And they're like, you don't got to do all that. But it's showing. I love character development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you, I can just, I, I, I'll be like, okay, like, we're going to grow to be like, we understand her. Because at first, you're like, girl, why is you tripping? Go get you another nigga. Then you really <laughs> learn. But you start to get to know her as the episode goes on. And you're like, she's a person. She wants good. She's trying. She yeah. sees the good in people. Mm -hmm. So, of course, she fell in love with this man who, like, you said you cast him to be the prize. Baby, I was, I'm all in, What you baby. think about Shannon, who plays Chris? So, we about to get into that with these topics, We too. are. Yeah. <laughs> because I think. Figure out what we drinking. Oh, yeah. Oh, girl, because we we 30 minutes in. My we bad, Ty. What we drinking today? Wait, what we drinking today? We got shit to talk about, child. <laughs> we getting excited. Uh-huh. So, this one is called The Dirty D. Ooh. Okay. Oh, I like that. So, this one, that's why she all buzzed already. Okay, Ooh. I got you. So this one has some Blanco tequila, we have some Campari, and then we have some grapefruit juice in there. That Campari and grapefruit go perfectly with that bitterness. They do. Um, we have a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of simple syrup, and a splash of pineapple mango juice, okay? And then for Lex and Drea, very similar, minus the booze. They have the Campari, the grapefruit juice, a little bit of lime, and then we have it topped off with some sparkling rosé. Mm. And then the garnish oh, okay. is a oh, grapefruit drink, peel with a little bit of, we, I expressed it inside, just a little bit of that on the rim. And we have a grapefruit peel right inside. She was it's like, I know you bitches. I was like, it. what do you mean no, minus we, the booze? No, no, no. We drinking. We just got the champagne. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, but I am about to take my shot, though. Yeah, we definitely about to take a shot. 
This episode is sponsored by Bitter Hill. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And one thing I can say that I have elevated my life is therapy has helped me 1,000%. I've gone to betterhelp.com. It's been about two years that me and Dre have been doing therapy. And if you've thought about doing therapy and you are unsure, this is your sign that you need to do it. I agree. My thing is, who doesn't want to be happy? Like, if you're dealing with anything, whether it's grief, whether it's depression, whether you just feel alone and you're feeling lonely, like, therapy can help you with all of this. And one thing that I love about BetterHelp is that it's so easy to talk to your therapist anytime that you want to. And if you don't like the therapist that you get initially, you can always change therapists and get somebody else. It's super easy, super convenient. And on top of that, it's affordable. Yes, you do all of this from the convenience of your own home. So what you're going to do is go to betterhelp.com backslash poor minds. That's better H-E-L-P dot com backslash poor minds. And with that code, you're going to get 10% off of your first month. So go to betterhelp.com dot com backslash poor minds today learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help visit betterhelp.com slash poor minds today to get 10 percent off of your first month that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash poor minds Yes. So that brings us to our first topic. We're going to talk about Chris, a.k.a. Ambien. Okay. I have a lot mm-hmm. to say about him. Oh, good. Do you? I want to hear about this. I do. So I wanted to talk about signs that you're being too thirsty mm-hmm. versus matching energy. Mm-hmm. Because I will say I was kind of mixed at first because I was like, okay, you need, like, DR needs to go on a fucking date. Like, yeah. Stop talking about your ex-husband. He, he don't want you no more. Because uh, who was the guy that robbed you? I can't remember his name. Danger. Danger said something that made a point. I think it was Danger that said it. He was like, hey, if, if the nigga who you giving head to and oh, don't miss you oh, after no, a day. That's Brian. That's Mr. T. At yeah, my bad. Yeah. So he said, if he ain't missing you after one day, somebody else giving him head. Yeah. And that's the truth. Ooh, and when he yeah. said that, I was like, Damn. Points were made. Yeah. That's real. Points yeah. were made. So at this point, it's like okay he's making it clear that he's moved on he and we know how men are women we <laughs> grieve relationships very quickly men it takes them about three four months to realize that they miss you so you have to just move on so i think whenever she dived in with chris aka ambien she was just going too hard because it wasn't about really dating and getting to know somebody it was about getting over her ex right right so wait, wait, I'm so sorry. What? Craig is over there. He been making this face like he is over there reminiscing. <laughs> I guess a, niggas, niggas really cannot go one day without their best they eater. They can't go one day without their best eater. <laughs> when, niggas cannot that's go what I'm one saying. day. So obviously he married Diara. Because she she was a good eater. She was a good eater. That had to be one of the points. <laughs> Not the only reason. But we know, we know. I'm not confirming, but I'm just letting you know be my saying? person right now. So yeah. I say all that to say signs that you're being too thirsty versus the energy matching. Because when yeah. we were watching the date, mm-hmm. they had a grand old time. Because I liked how she was like, y'all were joking. She's like, oh, I need to see your uh, tax returns. Right. But he was giving that energy back. Yeah. It was a lot of playful banter. I said, right. oh, them draws is coming off tonight. Yeah. I already yeah. knew where it was going. So it's like the vibes were there. <laughs> so when you were trying to explain it to your friends, because that's me on the first date. Yeah. I'm in love, bitch. I be trying yeah. to tell her I'm in love. They be like, you doing too much. I love him, bitch. We yeah. know each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like you be down bad like about that dick, just like DR. Uh, it was. On that show. <laughs> it was. Mm-hmm. See, that's why we got a different. We got to make a difference. This is not you in real life. Right, I know. About D- the yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, we're on the show. On, on the, the show. show. <laughs> but, but that is a quality of mine that I feel like I put on the character. Okay. Which is that I do have a big heart. I do fall in love really easily. Now, I've been married to my husband for a long time. Okay. Mm-hmm. How long y'all been married? Um, it'll be nine years Ooh. next month. I and know that's right. We'll be 19 altogether. Ooh. That's amazing. You yeah. are, that's how I know you a good woman. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's all, he's also hung in there. You know, I mean, I've, I've 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 been through many a growing season. Right. I've spent many coins on therapy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but yes. So I feel like I do fall in love easily, or even like, have you ever just been like, 
on the subway or something and you're like, I'm in love with that person across from me on the subway. Like I can Every fall day. in love. Yeah, I can fall in love and have a whole love affair in my head. I'm a what's your sign? And then get off the train. Um, I always have to ask people to I'm a Virgo. Woo. Really? Yes. When's your birthday? September 19th. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. When's yeah. yours? August 28th. Oh, um, I'm August seventeenth, so I'll be on the cut. I'm a oh, Leo, you're but she's a Leo. I'm a Leo, yeah. but what is it? What's my what's in my Vir what's Virgo for me? Isn't it my I, isn't my rising? Your rising? I is think your I think your rising is Virgo. See, but. I don't know nothing about the astrology stuff. That's my hard thing. What's, but I, what are you? Um, I'm a Taurus sun. I'm oh. a Libra rising and a Leo moon. Ooh, that's very beautiful. complex. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I sort of feel all of that. Do I'm, you? My moon is in Taurus. Okay. Ooh, so okay. that kind of like slow, quiet, yeah. luxury. Mm -hmm. I'm getting all that from mm -hmm. you. That kind of sophistication and ease. I'm getting all that. Mm. Oh, she you. She oozes that. <laughs> <laughs> Not on a regular. But, but no, you're, oh, I just thought about it. Your moon is Pisces. That's yes. why I feel like you be falling in love, though. Yes. Yeah, that and emotion. You know what I do? A lot of times what I've realized about myself, and I'm so happy. I actually just realized this about myself. Like you were saying, you can sit across with somebody and fall in love with them. I realize a lot of men in my life are not amazing. I made them amazing yes. from a fantasy in my head. I will write mm. out, if I like a nigga and we get off a date, I will have a whole fantasy of what I imagine them doing for me and mm -hmm. what's happened. Yeah. It's a whole story. I had a whole movie in my project. head. Project. You can project anything on them. Anything. Yeah. And I'd be thinking that they're this person. And in reality, they're not. They're not I right. made them special. Yeah. So once I lose mm. that spark, I'm like, oh, you're really not that special. I made you special. You're projecting your own specialness yes. onto everybody mm. else. And, and yes. overvaluing potential. Oh. Right. Yeah. Shame mm. on me. Yeah. Shame on me. Yeah, but yeah. that's why I said that be me being too thirsty. Well, thirsty is such a harsh word. It's the truth. I'd say hungry. Hungry mm. for love. Okay. Thirsty has such a negative connotation. True. Yeah, thirsty seems like you just gonna go for anything. Right. But hunger is like, we <laughs> all have a need for love. Well. And I think having the courage to <laughs> pursue that need is a beautiful thing. All right. yeah. As long as you have your girlfriend that keeps you in check that says, okay, you're doing too much. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I feel like... But DR, she don't listen to me, though. And you, don't don't, listen, you don't listen to her? I'm going to fall in love, and I'm not going to stop. Oh, no, no, no. no you she, do have to listen. Mm -hmm. She going to fall in love again and, and again, again. But that's and why again. I feel like... that Because love is beautiful. You're never going to stop me from loving. So you have the J-Lo thing. Yes. And she's a Leo. But she's a Leo, But too. here's the question. Do I you can't wait to like, make a movie about my man. Do you feel like you've fallen in love with the same kind of guy over and over again? Oh, no, 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 no. But it's a variety of... Oh, yes, 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 I don't yes, have yes. a type. Oh, okay. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. You think I have a type? You fall in love with the same type of niggas all the time. No, no I don't think I do. Because you can honestly right. say, outside of my man now, my the la the guy I dated last year... Was and, just like your man before him. <laughs> right, my man before him. And no, Rapper he was Bay, just, The one you dated last year was just like the one before him. Was like Rapper Bay? You think they were alike? If we're talking about characteristics, yes. Man, whole ass niggas, yeah, you right. <laughs> you wait that one little thing. Okay, okay. That's the thing. You can't just keep dating the same person and different people. Expecting oh, different know. results. Well, I'll say result. this. Yeah. I think the last guy I dated, let me not say that whole ass niggas. I was joking. She wouldn't. I'll say it. <laughs> I do not think niggas. he has characteristics of Rapper Bay. I really don't think. I really feel like he was a good guy. He just wasn't the guy for me. Yeah. And I can truly, I don't think he's a bad guy. When I talk about the other one, Narcissist, mm. but I used to I used to love a good narcissist. Are you an empath? Oh my she god, is. I try to heal the world. Me too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's what I. You get gotta from have it. water somewhere in your chart too, though, because I feel like usually Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio yeah. rising. Okay, Ooh. that's why. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like I, I I try to heal people. I'm always trying to like, oh, I can work through this. I can work through that. I didn't have to do that yeah. with my last situation. Mm -hmm. I think he came healed, and I think we just. We just didn't mesh like his communication style didn't match mine. He wasn't a bad guy. Right. He's actually a great guy, just not the guy for me. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I, but I think that come that comes with age and learning. Like I'm mm -hmm. 34. Like I. Oh, babies, y'all are babies. I'm 30. Yeah, I'm 32. Oh, child, I am like I'm not dating just to be like oh figuring shit out. Like what are we doing? You right. know. So I had I had to change. I did change my type. I definitely did. And I've gotten a lot of good results from that. Like my last situation. 
it didn't end like I wanted it to, but it was an amazing experience. And I learned a lot about myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I learned like, you know, I can't go all in head first. I really took my time with this relationship. I felt like it was him diving in. Sometimes the coochie be too wet. Mm -hmm. It do. Mm -hmm. They be swimming That's, in it. Yeah. I couldn't help I, it. I, I, you can't disagree. I don't disagree. I, I feel like my, with my husband, we had sex. He never left. That's how I, it goes. Sometimes. I've never look at Todd. She <laughs> never. I'm, I'm not being funny. Sometimes it hit him a little different. Mm -hmm. Craig, no, that's why he over there not. <laughs> Wait, which <laughs> which one is Craig? Craig <laughs> with the green with the green eyes. <laughs> green <laughs> pants, green eyes. Exactly. See, and Craig, one of the ones you gotta watch because he got them green eyes. He gonna look at you, mm -hmm. get you in a Stay trance. your soul. Get you in a trance. <laughs> I don't like no pretty eyed nigga. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. They, like they trick you. But no, what do you mean, babies? Because uh, I guess I just I'm fucking I like, swear to age. God, can I be honest right now? Okay. Sure. I really thought she. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, she I'm like thirty two, thirty three, thirty four. We were just I, talking about this. I, I gave twenty eight. I'll take it. You give it. I'll take it. I would take twenty eight too. Yeah, I, I gave twenty eight. That's 20. my birth date, August twenty eighth. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I would have said 27, 20, even when I was watching the show, I was like, okay, she young. Yeah. She's going to be a little, you know. Yes, I am young at heart. Yes, Thank you so that's all, that, but that's all, that's all that, that's that all matters. That matter. So what are signs to y'all that somebody's being too thirsty? Like when a friend is talking to y'all about a date, since we're going we gonna to get back, we're getting off topic. What is the sign that somebody being too thirsty? I think if you keep like wanting to reach out to that nigga. First. Yeah. 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 If like, you're, let him hit you up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. If you're if you're going, I text him, I called him, nothing. If it's not, if what you're throwing out is not coming back, it's too it's too thirsty. So we can't be mad at her friends for being like you're doing too much because they were yeah. like, girl, he ghosted you. They yeah. did say that. Yeah. They kept telling her he ghosted because I'm not gonna lie. My friend was telling me, oh my god, it was an amazing day. Y'all don't know I felt what I felt, and then you telling me that y'all had sex on the first night too. Yeah, I'm be like, girl, you had sex with him too soon. And that's the thing. I think that's the thing. I would debate this. Do not have sex. I agree. Too soon. I agree. Mm. I think it is a double standard. I mean, maybe some women haven't figured out, but I think bringing someone, and maybe, also maybe, um, queer men might feel this way too. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But bringing somebody into your body is just a different vibe. That's a lot. And it, it can be harder to get over, and it can make your head more cloudy. I 1000% agree. I, I agree. always say that. I mean, like, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, my first serious, serious relationship when I fell in love, we had sex on the first night, but we were also, like, I think yeah. I was 18, 19. Yeah. yeah. And we were young. Honestly, like I said, now, I'm not doing that because I don't know you like that. I need to, I need to really get to know you because I truly believe in transferring energy. I do believe in that. Yeah, sacred energy exchange. Oh, my gosh. I really do believe in that. So I was like, mm, on the first night, you might be going, DR might be going crazy because you don't know who you really done slept with, though. You don't know him for Because at first, before they revealed at the end that he really got kidnapped, I was like, he probably ghosted her. For real, for real. Yeah. Because I was like, what's going on? Like, he probably really did just be like, man, I got business to handle. I'm going to hit her up when I get back. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, until, and then we saw the text mm -hmm. of her being like, oh, I miss you. He was like, oh, I miss you too. I was like, oh, he in love too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so it's like, you couldn't really be mad at her friends because they were trying to protect her. Yeah, I mean, I think in real life, the friends are right on the money. Yeah. I think the show is a little bit of wish fulfillment because so many women, I feel like, get ghosted and are like, I would do want to hunt this nigga down and find yeah. out what happened to him. They'd and be so, like, what if he got kidnapped? What if he, right, he didn't ghost me. He just got murdered. <laughs> yeah. You, know? and you be so, hoping. <laughs> like, maybe he's just underground right. in a bunker. Oh, my God. I and have to find him. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I really did make that show because I would hear these stories from my girlfriends. Like, and then he just ghosted. He just fell off the face of the earth or whatever. So I wanted to give people something to, like, imagine. But in life, if somebody's ghosting you, my public service announcement is to please let that shit go. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Because they mean what they said or, or what they not saying. Right. Yeah. Because I feel like when somebody wants to be around you, they're going to let that energy be known. Yeah, for like, sure. They're not going to hide it, especially a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, they are, whether we like to believe it or not, they are very expressive whenever they want you around. So I feel like... 
her friends were not wrong. They were just going by the information that they were giving. Yeah. yeah. I do have one instance. This is like an urban legend. Mm -hmm. but I do know one instance. I do have a friend who her dude ghosted her. And now they, and she, she thugged it out. She forgave him. And now they're in a really beautiful relationship. Mm. I mean, yeah. So why did he go for them? Did she ever find out? <sighs> yeah, I think he was in between things. That's how it be being, sometimes. And wasn't being, you know, transparent about that and then had to sort of make a decision. Make a choice. Mm -hmm. And that's fair because yeah. I'll say this. Everybody got somebody. And sometimes you might meet somebody while you got your somebody and you, the grass, I always believe, I don't like the saying, oh, the grass is green on the other side. But sometimes you might meet somebody that just sweeps you off your feet. And sometimes maybe that person is not your person, but God is giving you a sign. You need to get away from this person because this is not your person. Yeah. I truly believe, like going back to what we were talking about earlier, the guy I was dating last year was not my person, but he was to get me away. You couldn't pry that nigga out of my hands. But mm -hmm. I had to meet somebody who was going to get me off of him because God was like, I kept praying, like, God, give me a sign. He would give me a sign. I'd be like, oh, not that one. Not that Because he didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> he still loved me, though. And he was like, let me just send her somebody, like, really amazing. But it's not going to work out. I just got to get you away it's from this person. It's going to get your mind off of that person, yeah. Exactly. So sometimes, you know, and I ghosted him, essentially. Oh, you're a ghoster, too. Oh, I'm a ghoster. Oh, I'm a serial ghoster. Really? For sure. That's so funny. Fucked up. It is. So wait, let but me I'm understand not no this. More. Cause I missed the whole I missed the apps. I missed the whole thing. Cause I've been so booed up for so long. Mm -hmm. I don't know that right. So what wh how come you can't just say this isn't gonna work for me? If we went on like one or two dates, I have to tell you that. Like I, I owe I owe you to be like, oh, this not gonna work. I feel like it's fucked up when you go somebody that you've been dating for yes. a long time that's that you me. seriously like have been with. I think that's fucked up. But like if we went on one or two dates, like I gotta text you and be like, this not gonna work. I could just not text you again. And next you, okay, that's different to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the other person is going, like we had an amazing time, right? Because mm. you What's had up? an amazing time. Can we I go didn't... back? Can we go out again? You'll just say nothing. Yeah. Oh, damn. And the, but the thing is, though, Ouch. I'm not going to lie. I feel like... That has happened. I'm not going to sit here and act like Ouch. it happened, for sure. Because I just was like, I mean, you... You had, had fun, because I'm, I'm lit. I'm amazing. I, and I get it. I understand why <laughs> you did Of course you had an amazing time. Look at me. However, <laughs> like, for me, it wasn't the same vibe. What's the, what's the, like, what's the craziest reason why you ghosted somebody? Ooh... I, I, I've told this story before. I have two stories of why uh -huh. I ghosted to somebody. I ghosted to somebody because he was laughing too hard at me, at my jokes. But you're I wasn't, funny. No, no, no. Like, that's I wasn't even saying but shit that was funny. Saying. But I have a friend like that who just goes to somebody for the exact same reason that he was laughing Because he was like, oh, he was like, oh. Where, at the time, I worked at, like, European Waxer. He was like, where you work at? I was like, European Waxer. He was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> a European. <laughs> nigga, what's funny about that? What? I was actually trying this to leave. This wasn't a black person. It was a nigga. No. But the, you know what? <laughs> Come on now. Like, why are you laughing? I swear. This that's happened. A, I tell this thing. story all the time because I still be in shock. That's not a thing. And... <laughs> I I, I, could, I was like, I can't do this. Every time I said anything, like, I'm joking with the waiter, he'd be like, oh, she crazy. She got a podcast. She crazy. Like, it was the whole okay, night. Okay, I understand that The one. whole night. Okay, and I, I, I ghosted somebody because he was a name dropper. Mm. Oh, huh. shit, hell yeah. You know, I would DC your fly last week. That my boy. Yeah. You know, like, we're, yeah. weird shit like that. So... I will definitely ghost people like if you because you're already showing me that you're a weirdo and you're yeah. doing too much. Yeah, yeah, I will ghost. I, the the probably the pettiest reason that I've ghosted somebody was for like grammar reasons. Mm. Ooh, that's like, a good one. <laughs> I remember I used to talk to this nigga and he would text me and be like, I am. But he would always put the I and M together. Mm -hmm. Like he was trying to make it like a thing. <laughs> like I, I know am. you know those are. No, it would be like I am. No space. Uh-huh. Like, is that your Gotti? I but, am. <laughs> no, it was not. But like, it's like, are you trying to are you trying to make this a thing? Because you know that it's two separate words. And I know autocorrect on the phone makes yeah. it two separate words. So you purposely backspacing. That's to crazy. Make this one word. Why are you doing this? I see somebody on um And he's saying, I want to. W-O-N-T. W-O-N-T. I seen somebody yesterday spell daughter D-O-D-D-E-R. 
And I see, that's what I'm saying. That type of love, nigga, <laughs> goodbye. I'm not mad at that. I'm mad at the... You I'm mad? Not, no, I'm not mad at that. That just, to me, is a little creative. I'm, I'm mad <laughs> at... <laughs> it, it, it shows their... Cre- it shows creativity. <laughs> I... What I hate is the pronouncing the pronouncing of the L and salmon. Okay. okay. I, I can't. That's a little petty now. I can't. Would you ghost somebody for that, though? Can I get I mean it depends on I need more I need more context. But I would have <laughs> but at some point I would have to say you can't say yeah. salmon. I can't do that one. Um I don't know what other grammar thing. That's really the only grammar. That's really it the is. only thing yeah. that I have is something about that L popping out. I can't do. So what mm-hmm. would be another reason, like just outside of grammar? Like... Oh, for me, I, I like so I like intelligence. Yeah. I do. I was I we were talking about this before. When I was in college, I was dating a guy. And I said, oh, um, I said, like, my brother's a politician. And he said, what is that? Or, or what do you mean? And I said, what do you mean? And he was like, what is, what, is a, what is a politician? And I was like, I can't. Now, that, that, that's, a little, that's a little too far. I was I like, I can't. What a politician and he is. was beautiful. Like, mm. one of the most beautiful men I've ever seen. So that, I like intelligence. I like a sense of humor. And I like kindness. If somebody is mean or rude, I, I can't. That's a deal breaker for me, too. Like, I pay attention to, like, if I go to dinner with somebody, how they treat, like, the waiters yes. and stuff. Yeah, yes. that is a And big, if you're, like, too breaker. rude, too abrasive, I don't like this. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think a sense of humor is important. Uh, yeah, I think a sense of humor is definitely extremely important. But like I said, it's, it's lines. I don't like... I laugh at certain things. I have a dark... Very, me too. Very me dark too. sense I of be humor. Like it'd be a lot of times I'll like, cause my mom passed like two years ago, so it'd be um, a lot of times I'll yeah. crack a joke or two. Like, yeah. and people be in the comments like, Lex, don't do that. You're not healing yourself. Yes, I am. Yeah, and P.S. Like, to me, that's how you heal yeah. is to keep your sense of humor. Yeah. I, I was talking about that. Somebody was saying, oh, I'm grieving. You know, I'm not having sex. And I was like, are you crazy? Well, my mother was dying. My husband was fucking exhausted. And when you know my dad died, I was definitely fucked. Yeah. yeah. I think you, you want to feel alive and yes. you want to celebrate the mm-hmm. fact that you're still here and you mm-hmm. want to get those endorphins going. I don't know why you would stop having sex cause, or cracking jokes. Or cracking jokes. Because something sad is happening. And my mom was hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Fucking for your mama is crazy. Man. <laughs> Big and old, bust it off. That sounds like a great anyone. song. Bust it off with your mama. Like, <laughs> this is, this is wild. Somebody call me if you have a beat. If you have a beat, call me. Period. I'd like to jump on that. We ready to get in the stool ASAP. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time to get into the bed. The, the bed. Bow. The bed. Bow, 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 bow. 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 Oh, yeah, we oh. not done, so. Oh, is that the beat? That's yeah. the beat. Yeah, okay. bow, bow, bow. So we, the bed is our sex topic that we talk that about. On. Oh, great. So I, I wanted like to talk about because... <laughs> Trey Market. In, in the show, Diara could not sleep. Right. She could not sleep. She was talking about she would literally sleep for like 10 minutes at a time. Mm-hmm. She was not resting, though. So she finally meets Chris. She goes on a date. They end up, you know, getting a little intimate. And she finally slept. The girl slept so good, she started calling him Ambien. Yes. That's his nickname, Ambien. You know how good some dick got to be to, like, you give him a nickname like, put you back to sleep, girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put you to bed. He put her to bed. Yeah. So I want to talk about, is good sex really like Ambien? Like it is. Same. Like, you, you go to sleep. Yeah, I have a girlfriend that was like, I get really energized after sex, and I want to clean the house. And I was like, no. no. I'm, I'm like a dude. I'm like, feed me, and then I want to go to sleep. I like to I'll eat. I'm glad you said I li- I love to have a little snack. Like, before I know me and my man, like, he got good snacks at his house. I go grab me a little bag, put it on the dresser. Mm-hmm. That's all he knows. Oh, I you need. put it down before. Hell yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so I could have know what's so coming. Because he going to go to sleep for sure. Okay. I need to grab my little snack, have me one, two, and I'm out. Yeah. So I'm... you don't go immediately to sleep? No, I like to eat first. I'm sleeping. Every time. I like to, if I have a really good orgasm, I'm going to eat and I'm going to go to sleep. Wow. And that's why I said in the, in the show it made sense because whenever I have a really good orgasm, I'm going to go to sleep. Mm-mm. I go to sleep real quick. It'd be like, ugh. <gasps> Damn! Oh. That, that can, yeah, that can that's happen. That's how me. <laughs> that can happen too. It depends. Bitch, I be out of there. <laughs> 
So I, I do have to ask though, like, okay, so her character, she's losing sleep and she ties into her being so set on finding Ambien because mm -hmm. she's like, oh, he got the best stroke in Detroit mm -hmm. and this and that. So it's like, is it like she's trying to find Chris because she really likes him? Or is it because of the sex? Or is it something to distract her from her divorce? Ooh, those are such good questions. That's I well. mean, yeah, I think that ultimately she's she's trying to distract herself mm. from her divorce. I, the thing that we kept saying in the writer's room was like, it's easier to solve a cold case than deal with your feelings, right. than deal with your divorce. Right. Um, so yeah, it is kind of a big metaphor for that. Mm -hmm. But you know, two things can be true. Yeah. Because I'm like, there's no way, like, don't get me wrong, we didn't all had some good sex before. For sure. Put us to sleep. But there's no way in hell I'm going on a true crime murder <laughs> mystery. I'm like, damn, what kind of dick was that? Yeah. yeah. You know, because she, she is full. You got her, she went into the house, found a man in the closet. Mm -hmm. could, he didn't even speak English. And she's mm -hmm. like, girl, we're still going to. Her friend like, bitch, is you crazy? You like, we're gonna find him. And you was better him. than me, because I wouldn't even cut that nigga out the tape. She he was trying to just been laying there. Right, right. I'm crying, because she really did cut that so tape. She is trying to get to the bottom of this. She is trying to get to the bottom of it. Once I would seen a man in the closet, I'm out. No, yeah. I wouldn't even see the man in the closet. Once I heard something beating on the closet, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> But haven't you ever, like you said, really tried to get to the bottom of something? Like, That's it's just true. gonna kill yeah. you if you don't know what's going on. When you went through that man DMs on Instagram, you got to the bottom of it all right. And when I ran through his house like the tomb right with that gun. You did. Wait, what? Yeah. Uh, I, you know. That's a story for another time. <laughs> That's why I said, That's a, we. <laughs> did you say gun? Mm -hmm. You got a permit? No. no it was his. Oh, he got a permit? <laughs> Well, don't put your, don't put your prints on that gun, please. <laughs> That's why I said we trying to develop our show about our lives, developing poor minds oh, to get it. Yeah. Stories, yeah. Child, stories Ooh. was had. But mm -hmm. anyways, so y'all feel like sex after sleep that gives you the sign that you didn't have some good sex, right? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Because in the show that Chris, that Ambien, he went to sleep as well, right? Yeah, he was knocked out too. Yeah. See, I like that. See, he was in the vibes. And I like that they showed that it wasn't just one-sided. Because when you see the scenes with her friends, you think it's one-sided, but it's mm -hmm. really not. Yeah. It's really not. And it I happens. Dudes catch feelings fast, too. And they, they be trying to hide it. Yeah. You know, they may not tell their friends that they're, like, knee-deep in, but they be, they be in it. They be feeling you on the mm -hmm. first day. That's why I thought it was interesting what you said earlier, because I feel like sometimes... As I get older, though, I definitely think it's a bad idea to have sex with somebody on the first day. But I feel like niggas definitely be falling in love with girls who be doing that too. They they do. They do. It's just it's just it's just about do you want to be in love mm -hmm. as well? Do you want to yes. go for that ride as well? And I think sometimes the chemicals and the hormones can mm -hmm. have you feeling things that you might not feel. That's mm -hmm. true. And yeah. it, and it's easy for you to detach mm -hmm. yes. if you need to, if you aren't sort of in a physical relationship. That's true. Yet. That is very true. Because the sex make it more difficult. The sex does sure. make it difficult. I don't... There are people out there that can have sex and they be like, okay, I'm on my way. Not me. And I learned that about myself. Like, I was like, I cannot just give my body and just be like, whatever. Oh, this is cool. This is casual. I stopped having casual sex. I really want to say probably about seven years ago it's been about seven six, i can't remember i honestly can't remember the last time i had sex with somebody and didn't mean something mm -hmm. to me you know because i realized like this is not this is not what you like you're really not enjoying this it's not like you a lover i'm a lover and it's a mental thing for me like i have to be in it oh lord this just this drink hit and i'm finna get yeah, this my man okay yeah. All right, so now we're going to move on. Now it's time to get into, into the bow. Bow. The bow. Bow. The bow. 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 Let me just say, I'm they having a ball. Too. Yeah, I'm really, I'm hey, having a ball with you because, you know what, I love groups. girl talk. Me too. We're me having too. a girl talk session, like I said, like, Everything about you has taken me for a surprise, and I love when people do that to me. Mm. Like, I'm about to be your number one fan. Now. I'm about to be under all your pictures. Like, yes, hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. You know that. what it is though, because I love creators that are all the way in. Mm -hmm. Like, you're you're more than what you know. What people probably see, they're like, oh, she's pretty, and that's it. 
because I know how people get judged by how they look, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, to see you doing this stuff, this has been inspiring for me today. Like, this conversation see, has yeah. been really inspiring for the both of us, and I know it has for her, too, because it's like, you really out here doing this. Thank like, you. that's really inspiring. So it's like, when we have conversations with, especially black women in this industry that are really doing it, they're really connecting the mm -hmm. dots for themselves. Because that was a problem for us. We could not connect the dots. I mean, it's, first of all, it's hard. It's hard to, to connect, connect those dots. So what you, do you mean? Even, like, like you talking about how you met Kenya Bears and you uh, kept that like contact. Like as a black woman, yeah. and, finding the right people. And, you know, you know you yeah. were he connect the, connected these dots for you and doing yeah. that. Because when we first moved here, we didn't have no connections. Right. We And then the people, the guys we were dating and the people we were meeting, they were more so on some shit like, y'all are meant to be seen and not heard. Nobody wants like, to Like, just be my girl. Yeah, I'm just be my girl. girl. Like, like, okay. Just, you know, be like right. this and X, Y, Z. So we was like... I'm like, no, bitch, like, we're funny. Like, we got to do this. Like, we yeah. have to, you know, so seeing women, you know, that are in this space and are, are flourishing is really inspiring to us. Because I know people look at us like, y'all doing it, but I'm looking at you like, damn, like, you really, doing, you it, really yeah. doing it, you know? So it's like, I love having girl talk and, like, seeing people on different levels and, you know, you know, just seeing where everybody at, what people doing mm -hmm. and knowing that it's possible yeah. because I think a lot of times people see or they want to do something. They feel like it's impossible. Yeah. And I tweeted that the other day. I said, whatever I want, I know I'm going to get it. Cause I, mm. I, you know, like I'm going to. Are you on your um, like Esther Hicks? Do you know her? No, who's that? No, yeah. She, I call her my white grandma, but she's like one of those spiritual people that's on YouTube. You know, she always has like videos on YouTube, uh -huh. but that's her whole thing. It's just like move from the place of already having what mm. you want. Yeah, believe that it's already gonna happen or that it's already happening mm -hmm. now, even though you haven't seen it, and then the manifestation can't help but show up. Mm. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all, we have been tuned in to DR from Detroit on BET+. Plus. It is so fire. Mm -hmm. That's my show. Yes. Tell us about it, girl. Hey, what up, though? My name is Diara. I play a divorcing school teacher who will stop at nothing to track down her rebound Tinder date. Check us out on BET+. Plus. The first three episodes drop on March 21st, and then one every week after that. Yes. Period. He Tune is in. High. Tune in. <laughs> and then talk about it with your friends, because mm -hmm. you're going to want to. Period. So last Friday, you matched with Chris on Tinder. Yes. You went on a date. This one says we're gonna have a good time tonight. Yes. And you had intercourse. Which I normally wouldn't have done, except we both agreed it was like a third date. <gasps> Can you write that down? So after he ghosted you. I did not get ghosted. Uh-huh. I think he was taken. And I'm not going nowhere until I get some motherfucking justice. Brian, you sound like a crazy white woman. I'm a concerned citizen. Yeah, that's some shit a crazy white woman would say. Ready or not, here I come. My first clue. Can't you run DNA on it? I teach earth science. I'm not CSI. Gonna find you. Nobody touch any of the evidence without gloves. Damn, this bitch done lost it. And yo, yo, you yo, yo. Me. yo. You were supposed to start dating as a way to face your divorce. You can't run away. I hadn't seen SWAT in months. Was I really the only thing holding you together, D? Damn. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, would you Felicia. mind your damn business? God damn. Gonna find you. I am in search of a man with whom I had a beautiful connection. And make you oh. want me. This is a bad plan. If anything feels off, we'll go. Off, off, off. Murderer. <laughs> I got my switchblade, my taser, my brass knuckles. Okay, John Wick, you stay here. If something pops off, I'll holler. I walk around like that bitch. This case is embarrassing me. Have you lost your mind? Dee, can we just keep it down a little bit, Oh, please? wow. You know what? I feel like an interpretive dance coming on. Dee? It's a you... lot of Alvin Ailey. Oh, you please? I can't control it. Okay. Talking all that shit. We just wanted to talk. We can talk on the way. Hop in. Oh, no. We just get ourselves kidnapped. What are you working for? Oh. Get this bitch a root canal. Who the fuck are you? Diara. Diara? Diara! Keep my name out your fucking face! Somebody save the fucking fish! I walk around like that bitch. bitch. You don't do a lot, D. You should talk to my therapist. Why would I go to a therapist who hasn't convinced you to stop robbing houses? She wanna get paid, don't she? I'm telling
telling you, manifestation is so real. Let me tell you what I used to do when I was younger, y'all. This is so crazy. But when I was younger, my friends, like, we used to pretend, they used to pretend like they were interviewing me. Mm -hmm. Like, I would be, like, acting like I was on the red carpet and doing... So it's so, like, when my <laughs> friends from high school see that I'm doing this now, they're like, nobody is surprised. But little stuff like that be manifestations. I used to be in my room talking to myself. Me too. Are you mm -hmm. an only child? No, no I, I had a sister. I am, and I well, she's only used to be talking to my sister. But yeah, my sister... Mama used to come in my room like, girl, who the hell who are you talking, talking to? Yeah. Well, my sister is very, like, she was always, like, when I say the smart one, I mean, she was more like books in the book. Yeah. She wanted to go to school. I was like, I'm a star. Yeah. Like, that was me. <laughs> so it's like the stuff that I wanted to do, she wasn't interested in. She's like, I want to read. I want to do this. I'm like, girl, let's go play. I'm I'm the singer. You my audience. Let me perform for you. Yeah. She was like, girl, don't nobody want to watch this shit? Like, she always <laughs> thought I was funny and was pushing me, but she was like, do this, but I don't want to have to, you know, be here and doing yeah. all that. So I say all that to say, I feel like all that stuff made me realize that was manifestation at a young age, and I didn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. So now as an adult that I realize it, I'll, I'll be like, I'm going to get there. I don't know how it's going to happen or what, but I know it's coming. It's I just coming. have to keep working. Yeah, keep working. Release the timeline. That's the hard, that's the hard thing because mm -hmm. we want things to happen overnight. And that wasn't my journey. Yep. You know, sometimes it will be, but that wasn't mine. And then also, I always say just like, keep working, keep making your own stuff and let the industry find you. A lot of people spend so much focus on like, how do I get in? How do I yep. get in? It's like, let's say you're already in. Mm -hmm. Go make something. Right. You know, do your own podcast. Do your own thing and mm -hmm. let them... Let people find come you. Come to you, yeah. Because yeah. I, I think that's one thing that we... We were talking about that this morning. Like, we just thank God that we stopped trying to fit into a box. Yeah. And we were like, you know what? I don't know how to show up as anybody else but myself. Yeah. Like, I'm going to just create something where I could be me. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever come with it, come with it. But I know it's coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said I'm having so much fun today because I like, you know, having girl talk with the girls. Who it's be, one of my love languages. Yes, yeah. Good conversation. Real. Good conversation with some girls. Okay, so now we're going to get into the bop yes so my bop of the week this was actually inspired by y'all's date scene okay. diara and ambien's date scene because uh this is a song called conversation pit by june tober it's such a good song because they're just like it's a song about you vibing with somebody like mm -hmm. you know lay your head on me let's just talk and just have a vibe and have a good time so whenever y'all were having that scene it just reminded me of this mm -hmm. song and i was like you know what this is a vibe <laughs> when y'all were on that date i felt like i was on the date because that's how my first dates be because he was like you know what you want to have a good time hell yeah i want to <laughs> have a good time what we finna do daddy <laughs> I love a good daddy moment. I That's love what a you daddy should. You should have called him daddy real quick. Just slide that hey, daddy, daddy in there. I'm not a big daddy. You not. You don't call me daddy. I call my daddy daddy. Oh, okay. See, so I, you still got your daddy. I never knew my daddy, so I can call oh, everybody daddy. Yeah, that don't mean nothing to me. Yeah, my mm, dad. Yeah. My dad is still up and around, and I call him daddy. Like, oh, okay. Because even my husband's like, "Why are you call him daddy?" I'm yeah. like, "We all do." I'm calling you daddy. <laughs> and, I, that's the only daddy I, I think call about. My, I used to call my dad dad for sure. Oh yeah, you so said I guess dad. That's why I be calling my nigga daddy. She do. Oh, she be like, "Hey, big daddy." I do be. I be calling Ooh. him. I be adding a big in front. <laughs> hey, big daddy. Uh, that, that's so southern. Is it? And, it then, is. and also, once I guess once I have my son, I will call my husband daddy just because. He calling like, him daddy. Hey, daddy. Yeah, but I'm but not it's a not big, like I'm not people a big be daddy. calling their sons daddy. Now that's a little oh, weird. Oh no, they be like, "Hey, little daddy." Oh, hell no. <laughs> you ain't never seen No. Y'all ain't never seen Mom, that. I don't have kids, but my no. sister, I cannot imagine my sister calling Peeny oh, little daddy. daddy. That nigga, hey, sit your <laughs> shitty ass down. Exactly. What? I, I call him Bubba. Doing little daddy is crazy. Little daddy. <laughs> so you're not a fan of daddy. I thought that was just like, Ty, do you be caught saying daddy? No, you got your daddy in your life. Though. What's your, we have what? a complicated relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'm calling you daddy, it's time for you to go. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm calling you daddy, it's time for you it's to leave. It's time for you to go. Right. I, I, I can't find me. you. That's hysterical. I am weak. Okay, Man. so now we're going to... Oh, wait. Y'all ain't gave me y'all ball. Yeah, baby, you was ready to I move I was ready to move on. on. I'm, I'm having a ball. Girl, okay. what you been jamming? So, my vibe. So, I don't be like how people be trying to play with the weedy. Because she what? got a new song. Speak on it. I like it. 
like her new song. I do. Rich I'm Fitties. giving rich shit. It's a good Super fine. Song. Bills paid. Doing fine. I feel fine. like it's a girl anthem. Like, I love songs, and I've talked about this on the show before. I love songs where you can, like, just be a girl and mm-hmm. be in your house, getting mm-hmm. ready, doing your makeup, doing your hair, getting ready to go out. You putting that shit on. You feel like a bad bitch. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's a bad bitch song. Like, it make you feel good. It does. And I love that song. Shout out to Sweetie. And let me say this. I actually have And been... she reposted my video. She did. Ooh. Shout out to Sweetie. Come on the show, hey Sweetie. Hey, girl, come on the show. <laughs> this is what I hate. Speaking of dreams and aspirations and um, manifesting things, I tweeted this the other day. I said, I cannot stand seeing people telling somebody to stop doing something just because you don't like it. Because exactly. who the fuck do you think Imagine you are? Imagine that. I am so tired of seeing people telling Sweetie to stop rapping. Mm-hmm. And who the fuck are you to tell somebody to stop chasing their dreams just because they, you yeah. don't feel good enough to chase your dreams yeah. or maybe your dreams fell through. Stop telling people, stop chasing their dreams. And I also feel like sometimes it's a trap of black excellence too. Yeah. Like, like every time somebody black does something, it has to be the greatest thing that's mm-hmm. ever been done. When white people get to be mediocre all, all the day. Yeah. How many times have I said this? I am not trying to be the podcast that you come in here and you learn about all the stars and the moon and science and how to cure cancer. Baby, we just want to laugh. We be trying to have a good time. P.S., I love that you just said that because people always say, oh, this is not curing cancer. Guess what? Nobody's cured cancer. Nobody has cured cancer. So what does help when somebody has cancer are laughing, getting your mind off of things, community. But let me also tell you something, too. We went to Detroit. You did. Had the most amazing show ever. You know what? This guy sat up front row. And said, I just went through chemo and poor minds got me through chemo. God, I love y'all oh, so I just much. got shit. Yeah. But I'm saying yeah. though, because you you talk about, you know, we not contributing, but I do. I, yeah. We make people feel good and that's yeah. what it's about. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So it's like, maybe you don't see the value in me, but that don't mean I'm valuable. Just because you're, you're one person. Mm-hmm. You're one person. I'm like, there is so many podcasts about health, about mental health, about... Serious. A religious, serious political... Shit. This ain't that. Mm-hmm. If you want to watch that, go. There's plenty of black women who have podcasts about these things. Mm-hmm. You have to go find them and do your research. But stop trying to mold us and make us into what you like. If you don't like this, go watch what you like. Go watch what That's you what like. That's what I always say. I Y'all get see- a lot of criticism. Um, yeah, we do. I think we, I mean, we get more love than criticism. Yeah, I feel yeah. like sure. people love you. But guys. people definitely be like, oh, y'all need to talk about more serious topics sometimes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we do. The crazy thing is sometimes we do actually talk about serious topics, but every episode, if that's what you're expecting, this isn't the show for you. you. And that's okay. It's Mm -hmm. just not for you. Go find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said even about, you know, Diara from Detroit, that's what I love is because, like, we feel like black women, we have to be in these serious roles Mm -hmm. and doing all this. And it's like, this is fun. You know, even with, um, what's her name, Uh, with Abbott Elementary. Quinta. Quinta. Mm -hmm. Like, even with her. I remember Quinta when she worked at BuzzFeed. Yeah, me too. Because I was a fan of her. So it's just like, it's amazing to see somebody. Like, we have fun, too. Yeah. Like, we want to laugh, too. We're humans just like you. People keep asking me, like, what do you want people to take away from this show? And I'm always like, I want them to be entertained. Mm-hmm. I want them to have something to talk about with their girlfriends at brunch. I want them to get on the phone and be like, did yeah. you see that? What do you think? Mm-hmm. This is like that time you was looking for that dude. Like, I yes. want people to just have a good time. Well, you did that. Because when she Thank finished you. the episode, she called me back. She was like, girl. And I said, girl. <laughs> I did. I was so like, you definitely good. accomplished that. Because we was gossiping and talking about it for Sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I agree with you. I feel like a lot of people just get to be mediocre and be extremely fucking successful in their field because it's a crowd for that. For Why sure. can't we just exist? And can I add something to that, too? I also hope you guys enjoyed the production values. Oh. Because we, you know, we spent a little more money than we normally spend at BET on, on television shows. And I think sometimes there's this unspoken thing mm-hmm. that black women just want to watch black women and don't mind when the production values aren't. It was not. That was great. It was so, not giving low budget at all. At all. Thank that's you. why I said. Yeah, I, it was giving Drea, big budget. When I called, that's why I said, I'm like, who? I'm like, who is this? I'm like, who is this girl <laughs> that's writing her own shit? Got her name in the show, and like, I didn't say that to her, but I'm thinking in my head the production value was amazing. 
Yeah, it looked like I, I'm Steven Spielberg was on that motherfucker. Well, and it's, yes. we, we wanted we wanted it to look beautiful. We wanted the black people to look beautiful. We we just wanted it to be yeah. beautiful. And mm -hmm. we, there were a lot of meetings that went into a lot of that stuff. So we just hope people enjoyed that aspect of it too. And it kind of feels like like it's an old detective show. It definitely was and giving as that. It, as it goes on, you'll see different different things that we do uh, visually in a show too. It wasn't given low budget, I'll tell you that. No, it was really good. And it's so crazy because the world is so small. I have a friend who actually works for BET and she's been working on the premiere party. Cool. Her name is Elise. Oh, yeah. You know Elise? Y'all yeah. know Elise? Yeah. That's so my that's, girl. That's, that's, that's my, my friend. That's, that's my mother's name. Yes, that's yeah. one of my really close friends. And she had been telling me about the show for, like, weeks. And then when we got the opportunity to, like, watch it first and then do the episode with you, I was like, that's crazy. The world is so small. Because she yeah. had been telling me about the show and how good it was. And uh, so I got to watch it early. Hi, Elise. Yeah, hi, hi Elise. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what's your bop of the week? What you been jamming this week, oh, music-wise? You know what? I've been singing um, Texas Hoedown with my son. Texas Hold'em with my son. Yes. Oh, okay. And um, Texas hold down. Period. And, same time. Okay. Same time. <laughs> and every time it gets to the cussing, I scream different lyrics. So, so he, he don't know it? Yeah. So I'll be like, Come on, Woodson, take us to the flow now. <laughs> so he thinks that's the real, that's the real lyrics. That's all he needs. Yeah, but every time I call him, he sings it. He goes, chain, oh. chain, 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 chain. <laughs> I love that. That's I'm loving cute. this Beyonce era. Me too. The Me country too. era. It's like, we get, because that's ours. It's ours. That's it's the thing. Ours. This is really like a non thing. I'm like, I'm sorry. Have you heard of Aaron Neville? Like, I don't understand what's really new about mm -hmm. this. It feels totally organic to her. Right. And it's like, it's crazy because uh, we actually talked about this a few weeks ago. But when she performed at the, what was it, the CMT Music Awards? I mean, they were in a frenzy. Oh, well, and she did so Daddy's. Yeah, she did. Uh, uh, Daddy's Girl. Is it, Daddy's, yeah. Daddy's is it Daddy? What's the song? It's Daddy's Girl. Look, y'all, I'm a little tipsy. It's the Daddy's Girl song. I think Whatever it was the, the Daddy's song. Girl. Then she did. Yeah. And it's then she was, but she was performing with Dixie Chicks. And yeah. you know, they done banned the Dixie Chicks from that world because they was against Donald Trump. And you know, they right. loved them some Donald Trump child. Mm -hmm. Right. But I just feel like if y'all do y'all's history, we did country music first. Yeah. So it should not be a problem that, you know, we getting our roots back. So I love the fact that the girls, there's a lot of girls going viral right now on TikTok making country music. Mm -hmm. And we getting back to that. So shout out to our girl, B, our Texas yes, girl. for yeah. sure. Because it's always been a big thing in Houston, too. Like, baby, we going to wear our cowboy boots. And the black rodeo. And our yeah. yeah. The rodeo. Every, yeah. The rodeo is actually going on right now. Yeah, too. and it's every it's every year. Mm -hmm. And they were like, why is everybody going all in on rodeo? Baby, we've been doing this we've since we were in We've been doing this our whole life. Literally, like we used to have we, to go Western Day in school. We used to we were, the like, church the would get a like church fans together, and we would come to Houston. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm from a little town now. Yeah, we used had to, to get have them, to come to Houston. We used to have to get we were getting them church fans with our cowboy hats. We would come to Houston for the rodeo. Oh, that's so cute. It was a holiday, ho ass nigga. It was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna get into our favorite segment of the week. It is pour your heart out. If you want your question answered on the show, yeah, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. If you are a member of Patreon, make sure you put that in the um, description box and you can skip the line. You know what I'm saying? Do you give a good advice? I think so. You think so? I think so. People ask me for advice a lot. Okay. okay. We, about to, we about to find out, we Chad. We get into it. Okay, question number one. I'll get to the point. I grew up really insecure and not grown into my looks. Mm -hmm. And now that I am 22, I give bad bitch and get a lot of attention from men on Instagram. I, and I don't know how to really deal with this new attention. I've always been the type to talk only to one man at a time. And I've always regretted this. But now that I'm single, I want to get into talking and dating with multiple people so I can finally weigh my options and not settle and tie myself down. I just want to be there for a good time and not a long time and enjoy the pretty privilege. How can I get into this without feeling like or being looked at as a hoe? Because men try to court me and even fly me out, but I always freeze at the thought. But I want to grow into a pro like y'all, LOL. Thank y'all. A pro? A pro? A pro what? A pro Girl, ho. I don't know. I got a man. <laughs> exactly. I got a man now. I got a man at home. Okay. I don't know what y'all be talking about. I don't know what y'all... Okay, <laughs> let me tell y'all something. Now, in my 20s, was I young, wild, and free? Yes. Okay. But I'll say this. Outside of that, that don't matter. Like, yes, we are in relationships now. But I will say, don't do something... Okay, do it because you want to, first of all. 
can't nobody make you do anything that you don't want to do. So I think have fun. Because I think my goal was, though, even when I was young and dating a lot of people and going around and having fun, I was always looking for the long goal. I, I didn't know when I was going to meet my husband. That's the beautiful thing about life. I don't know. I don't know if I've met, even met my husband yet. Yeah. So I feel like if you date with pure intentions, that's when you have the most fun. When I started dating, kind of being like trying to get something out of a nigga and started moving like that, that's when it kind of didn't become fun to me anymore. When I was dating and I was like having fun and just enjoying people's company and just having a ball, that's when I had the most fun. So I feel like if your intentions are pure with dating, you're going to have a good time regardless. And I just feel like it's easy to have fun and not be considered a hoe. Like, I feel like when I was in my 20s, I definitely used to date. Like, I would date multiple people at one time. Like, you want to go on a date this week? This nigga want to go on a date next week? I'm going. Don't that fuck mean, all them niggas. That yeah. doesn't mean you're having yeah. sex with all it of them. It doesn't mean that you're having sex with a nigga just because you went on a date with him. I'm going to explore my options, but I'm not giving all you niggas no coochie. Like, excuse me. Yeah. Absolutely not. That's how you have fun and not get considered a hoe. Big, yeah. big. Don't give every nigga some pussy. It's really that simple. Mm -hmm. Cause you, yeah. how old were you when you got married? Were you young? No, I was 30. Okay, so, but y'all were together for a while. Yeah. So mm -hmm. did you have like that phase of like dating around and? Not really. I mean, my phase of dating around was very brief. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'll say. I didn't sleep with all of them. Like, yeah, you right. don't have to fuck them. I think that's when, what did she say about our shutter? Did she say something about our shutter? She said, I always freeze at the thought, but I want to grow into a pro. See, like, that feels like if you're freezing at the thought, then your body is doing something very intelligent, which yeah. is telling you to stop, yeah. to slow down. And I don't know why you would want to try to override that. That, mm -hmm. ain't your, that may not be your lane. That's not your, yeah, that's not who you are. You can't handle it. You don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Just date. If you like somebody and you feel like there'll be a good time, have sex when you feel, when you really feel like that's mm -hmm. something that you want to do yep. and you feel prepared to do that. Agreed. But there's no, like, I just want to have sex with a bunch of people. I just want to go out with a bunch of people. That's, that's a recipe for disaster, actually. Exactly. I agree. And I why think, are you forcing yourself to do that because of what you see on social media? That's what I was about yeah. to say. I think when I was in my 20s, Instagram wasn't like it is now. I wasn't seeing everybody, what everybody else was doing. So I was just doing what made me happy. So she's young. She said she was, what, 23, 22. 22. So obviously she's seen things. She's seen these girls outside. They get in Chanel bag. I didn't even know what a Chanel bag was. I didn't get my first Chanel till I was, what, 32? Yeah. You know, it's crazy because girls are literally 21 be like, oh, give me my Chanel, give me my Chanel. So I'm not saying that that's what she's talking about because that's not what she said. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think a lot of times social media makes people think, oh, if you outside and you being with these men and doing that, you going to, that's how you get the shoes, the bags, that X, Y, Z. Girl, what makes you happy? Yeah. That's what you need to ask yourself. What makes you happy? Because when I was young and dating around, I was enjoying you know, feeling loved or what mm -hmm. I thought was love at the time. It was fulfilling me. It was exciting. I loved that fresh feeling of a new relationship. You know, right. I was enjoying myself. So do what makes you happy. Don't be trying to do it because, like you said, if your body is freezing up, your body is telling you something. <laughs> yeah. Bitch, I don't you, like this shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be here. And the body is so intelligent. It that's is. what I sometimes if your body feels a certain way around somebody and you can't explain it, it's that's gonna tell all you, you. Need, that's all you need to know mm -hmm. is your body is saying no. It's gonna tell you every time. Okay. Question number two. Hey Lex and Drea, my name is Sierra. I love you guys, been a supporter since day one. Okay, let's get to it. I'm gonna try to keep it short. I'm 26 years old dealing with a man that's 39. He's 13 years older than me. We've been dealing with each other for almost five years. When we met, we clicked and been tight like glue ever since. Our sex is fire and our chemistry is beyond this world. The thing is, he is in a relationship. I'm a side piece. Okay. We try to break things off multiple times, but somehow we keep coming back around to she each other. She did all of that talking to say... <laughs> you should have led with that. Oh, right. Right. So... It should have started said, with, I'm a side piece. Right. But somehow we keep coming back around to each other. We've been through a lot. And to be honest, we both expressed our feelings and love for each other. I do want to end things, but it's hard to do when we've invested so much time, you know? But I guess I'm asking, what tips do y'all have to let someone go you feel you're attached to? P.S. I'm doing my own thing, so I'm not dealing with only him, but mainly because he really does make me happy. 
Girl, ain't no tips. Like, just let that nigga go. Because he married. And if y'all been messing with each other for five years and he still haven't left the wife, he not gonna, he not gonna leave her. So yeah. I just feel like you need to just walk away from that situation. It's not gonna be easy because obviously you have feelings, but I would just go cold turkey. Like, not text him anymore, not talk to him anymore, yeah. unfollow him on social media because I don't even want to see what you got going on. But I definitely think for your own mental health and stuff, you should let that situation go because mm. nothing good going to come from me. Yeah, I have a tip. You should go on his IG, find a picture of his wife, print that shit out, and Ooh. put it in your house. That's a good tip. Because that yeah. that's going to remind you, because that goes with my tip. He didn't pick you. Put that shit on your wall when you wake up. Yeah. It's been five years. He did not <laughs> pick you. Every morning he's waking up next to his wife and choosing her. Mm. He may be fucking you and talking to you and expressing his feelings. Yeah. Those words don't mean nothing because his actions are saying it all because he's at home with his wife. Mm -hmm. He didn't pick you. He's not picking you. Every day he's choosing not to pick you. Yeah, that I should mean. be enough motivation for you. I think a lot of times you have to know your worth. We have to know our worth. Like... You know what I'm saying? And that and that is coming from somebody. I was in a situation with the guy and I didn't know that he would he was, you know, in a situation and I chose to keep dealing with that. Why? Why? I look back on it. and I'm like, damn. And I say this all the time. I went through that. So you ain't got to go through that because it was, looking back, I'm like, I was so young and dumb and stupid. And it's like knowing what I know now, it's like, why? You're going to look back on yourself and be happy that you let it go because it's not going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. He's going to lie to you. Because imagine if he's doing this to his wife, what you think he going to do to you if you do get him? He going to do the same shit to you. Mm -hmm. you we got to stop thinking that we're on an anomaly in a situation with these men. If you see how he's treating another woman, nine times out of ten, he's going to treat your you that way. Coming, your time wait. is coming. Mm -hmm. Baby, your time is coming. The best thing I did was escape. Ooh, I done made it out. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. 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 So, yeah, that's my tip. Mm. Snap for me for that. I'd have been through it. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Amen. Not everybody snapping. Because, baby, I we finna have, yeah, have Lex from... I join in. Yeah, we finna have Lex from Houston episode, bitch. It's getting too Wait, hot. We can franchise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so, Diara, talk about the show, where they can find it at, yes. how they can follow you, all that good stuff, and other things you're working on, all that good stuff. Oh, so you can find the show on BET Plus right now. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. um, and you can find me on Instagram, Diara Oni, at Diara Oni, O-N-I. And what else? Oh, and right now I'm, I'm producing a, I'm working on producing a movie. Okay. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that'll be, that'll be coming to y'all sooner rather than later. Well, I'm telling you, if people, well, not if, the people are going to tune into this show. So if the movie is just, as good as the show. We we coming out we in, in the woodworks, baby. Mm -hmm. You always got a supporter here at the Poor Minds and the Poor Crew because I've had a time today. Oh, Me too. Thank this you. was really fun. Yeah, yeah so really thank fun. you for pulling up. Y'all make sure y'all follow my girl and y'all check out Diara from Detroit on BET Plus. And we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Doing yeah, I'm doing mighty fine. fine. Last time I seen you, it's been a long time. Stop smiling at me, get that look off your face. Please don't even front, stop being so fake. I know you do not like me, yeah, you made it very clear. I was talking about me, from what I hear. I always put me down when you thought that you could. I want you to know that I'm doing so good. Wasn't it in you that said that I was all that in you? Said I didn't have a clue. And wasn't it you that said that I wouldn't make it through? And wasn't it you that said that I didn't look too good? That I wouldn't do too good? I never made it out the hood. I want you to know that I'm doing so good. So good, so good, so good. I know you hate it, but I. So good, so good, so good. I'm doing so, 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 so good. So good. So good. It's hard to fake it, but, but I. So good, so good. Okay, we sound real good. This, this is what I'm had to say. Said we wouldn't make it. Now we're doing platinum, and now you can't take it. Other round that have been that good tip. Look at us now and see, see how we live. I said it with my people, and it was to keep it real. Didn't get caught up in how to make you feel. All the things I'm doing that you thought I never could. I want you to know that I'm doing so good. Wasn't it in you that said that I was all that in you?
Cause I didn't have a clue. Wasn't it a you that said that I wouldn't make it through? Y'all can sing. Wasn't it a you that said that I didn't look too good? Look at me now, I ain't got good. Now I made it out the hood. I want you to know that I'm doing so good. So good, so good, so good. I know you hate me, Come on. but I'm so good, so good, so good. Doing so, 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 so good. So good, so good, so good. It's hard to face it, but I'm so good, so good, so okay, good. Okay, this one she broke it down. Y'all ready? Doing so, 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 so. I'm doing so, 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 so. I'm doing so, 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 so good, 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 good. Next week. Bye, y'all.